Hi guys, this is Kim. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. Looks like we got everything fixed and we are back live from Swirly Dew's camp. And again, what we're doing is an altered bottle. We got these nice bottles in our swag bag for Swirly Camp. And who doesn't like an altered bottle? So this is what it looks like. I've done some prepping on my bottle already. All right, so this bottle is covered with some clear gesso. And it's got a nice frosted look. I guess if you wanna frost your bottle, you could cover it with some clear gesso, but it flakes off pretty easy, so you probably have to uh, seal that. But so that's the prep work that I've done on my bottle. And I've also got some metal pieces here that we're gonna be adhering to it. Um, and I did like a light coat of white gesso on a couple of pieces. I left the bigger piece, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and do some gesso on that as well. Real sure. And I'm gonna make sure I cover everything. This is just some metal pieces. We've got some clouds moving in and out, and that's think that's the problem with our Wi-Fi, but we're just gonna work our way through it and hopefully we don't get kicked out permanently. Uh, what I was saying about my trinkets, a lot of these I think are leftover pieces from like uh, some classes that I've taken and bits and pieces from leftover uh, Swirly Do's past kits. I just kind of tend to throw them all in the box. And now with covering these with gesso, you wanna make sure you get in all the little nooks and crannies. Because again, remember, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go over this with some uh, rust paste. And we wanna make sure that it adheres to everything. I've stuck a little uh, pearl in the center of this. So I'm covering that too. Doesn't have to All right, now I've got it all painted. Now it's just a matter of, and I'm gonna turn this around this way. I'm gonna try and work upside down so you guys can see. Now it's just a matter of adhering these on to the bottle. And I'm gonna use some 3D uh, gloss gel to do some adhering. Oh, where's my other paintbrush? You know, everybody's got their favorite paintbrush for using certain things. Got a little wooden palette here. We'll squeeze out some gloss gel. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time because this is a glass bottle. I Now you want to make sure you have a good amount of gloss gel on your pieces to make sure that they hold. And I also have uh, my leaves coming off the side just to give it a little more visual interest. So this is what we look like. Uh, they're not quite dry yet, so I can't lift it up too high. But we're going to hold those in place for a couple of seconds or a minute or so to let those adhere. that in there so I'm gonna, don't mess up my brush and what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the patina rust effects so we're going to be using the blues the green oh let me put those over here so you can see we're gonna be using the blue the green and the brass All right, your, your rust paste, it's a three paint system. Uh, one of your paints is nice and thin. The other one has a little bit of texture to it. It's a little grittier. And then the, other, the third one is a lot grittier. Well, the three paints combined, depending on how you apply them, um, will give it that patina rust effect. And the reason that we put the gesso on the bottle is to give this paint something to grab hold onto. Because you know your bottle's a little slick. And so we really want this stuff to hold on to. Same thing for the uh, metal pieces. So, and that's the other reason you wanna make sure your pieces are kind of, uh, are really stuck down. You don't want your pieces to uh, slide off as you're applying this. Now, you can use it with a regular paintbrush. I like to use like the pouncer brushes. I've got some that have the round tip to it. And then I've got some that have the flat tip to it.
Now, when you're using your rust paste, um, you can start with any color. I like to start with the copper for, or the brass first. I like to start with the uh, thinner color first. And you just go ahead and paint it on, and we're doing the whole bottle. And you can miss spots. It doesn't have to be complete coverage. Because again, you're gonna go in with the other colors. You're trying to come up with that patina look, that rusted patina look. And again, still, I'm kind of holding on And with the pouncing on, it's giving it some added texture. And now I'm gonna take uh, my round brush. I wanna go in with some of my blue. And I wanna get in into some of these little detailed areas. So I'm taking my blue. I'm just pouncing that in there. The best part about this is you really don't have to wait for the layers to dry in between. You can just get in there and start adding. And I'm going to go in with some of my green. And I'm basically just working on the front of this right now. So you can see. And as you're adding this, you'll be able to see which colors you want to use more of and which colors you want to use less of. It's like now the way it's looking, I'm probably going to end up adding more blues to it. And that's just my personal preference, but you'll see as you start to work with it what combination of colors and how much or how little of each one that you prefer. And again, this is a lot easier once your embellishments are dry and in place. But for time's sake, it's the one thing about doing things live. And again, you just keep layering and layering and layering until you're happy with what you have. Chrissy's here with us. Hello, Chrissy. Anybody have any questions yet? I think Jan might be around to answer some questions. Or I think Jan may even want to stick her head in and say hello. Mm -hmm. There's Jan. Don't look too close, no makeup. Good morning, ladies. So, here's a quick look at how it's looking so far. Can you see that? That's that rusted patina look now. And it's just a matter of laying your colors how you Can't hear it. So, who else is here with us? Come on, guys. You guys got any questions yet? A lot of the things that I'm using, again, I told you the metals are kind of from my metal stash, but 
Lava stuff can be found at Swirly Doos, either from past kits or the Swirly Doos Kit Club. And if you've never been, our website is www.swirlydoos.com. Join us. We have lots of tips and tricks in our forum. Okay. Nannies. Um, we have lots of challenges. Uh, some of them you don't even have to be a Kit Club member to join. So we'd like to have you there. Come on over and visit us. Take a look around. I'm sure you're going to love our kits. And you're going to want to join. And here's a little trick for you. If you join our Kit Club, mention my name, Kim. You'll get 10% off your first kit. And you'll also get a coupon for... Oh, I mixed my brushes. You'll also get a coupon for 30% off at the store. So you can buy some of this fun stuff. And you can do some of these tutorials that we've got. We've got. Uh, our YouTube site's got tons and tons and tons of uh, tips and tricks on our website and lots of free videos of tutorials on um, our YouTube site. All right, ladies, what I did was I went and made an executive decision. My stuff wasn't drying, so I'm going to go ahead and do the whole bottle. I'm going to do those separately, and then afterwards, I'm just going to go ahead and attach them and let it sit so they can dry. We've got a storm coming in, so I don't know if that's gonna that's give, what's giving me the problem. But, since I mixed my brushes here, but so far, this is where we're at. Excuse the empty space, but I am gonna fill that in since I don't have my embellishments there. I can get that all filled in behind it. I'm loving the mix of the blue and the brass. And then just to add in a little green to lighten it up a little bit. Let's get to the other sides of this. So, any questions? Anybody? Bueller? One of my favorite movies. As you can see, that's what the front of it's going to look like. I decided to keep it fairly simple, so all we're going to do is decorate the front. Um, the rusting, the rusted patina look, I think, gives it a lot of interest itself, so I don't think the bottle itself really needs a whole lot. Um, you may want to add something to the back of it, or you may want to add a little bit more to it yourself. But for me, just that... Uh, one centerpiece and then those few things hanging off the edge give it enough visual interest for me and i thought about adding some lace to it um i just didn't like the way the lace went with the metal maybe i just don't have the right lace with me maybe once i get home you know when you're out at a crop or especially squirrely camp uh you're traveling you really don't have everything that you uh have in your own scrap room and so you just don't have the right piece and i think that's kind of what's going on so maybe when i get home i may add some adjustments to it if i make some more changes to it i'll post and show it to you all right so i've got pretty much most of the brass all over the bottle and again i didn't cover the entire bottle i've got some empty spaces that i'm going to go in with the blues and just mix that in and I, again, you can add this in a smooth fashion or you can pounce it on. I like the pouncing. Again, it gives it another set of dimension, even though your uh, rust paste have texture to it. When you're doing the pouncing and mixing, it just gives it a little bit more dimension. Just a little more depth. And don't forget you're doing the whole bottle, so make sure you go all the way up to the top with it. No rhyme or reason, we're just doing it. And I'm going over some places where I actually do have the brass color and just kind of mixing in. Kind of pounding it in. 
This would be something to kind of fun to do on a day where you've had a bad day and you just need to pound something. Come in, get some rust paste out in a bottle or something and start pounding on it. This is also fun to do on chipboard. Anybody want to check in and tell me where you're watching from? I'm trying to do this and view comments as well. Some up around the top. Now I'm going to go back with my green. The green is super gritty, super textured. Yeah, I'm doing good with my one little leaf piece. Thought it was adhered and now it's just slid off on me, but we're gonna stick that right back on because it was holding up pretty well. We're going back in. Oh, it looks like that one gave up on me too. But we're gonna take some of that green and don't worry about if you uh, feel like you've put too much on of one color. Like right here, looks like I got a lot of green right there. You can always go back and layer one of your other colors on top of it and blend that in. That's what this rust paste is all about. It's all about blending until you get it the way you want it to look. And so with the green, what I'm trying to do is soften some of the, what I call the hard edges of where I was just tapping stuff on. But as you're using this, you'll see how super gritty the green is and how it really stands out. I'm gonna go back with some blues right in here. And then I'll go back with that and blend that some. I'm really liking how this is turning out. Just not liking that my embellishments wouldn't adhere. I could have pre-done it, but I wanted you guys to see. And so here's our patina bottle. some spots in the back where I want to add some more green to it. And that's the thing. Take a look at it and make sure you've got it everywhere you want it and looks the way you want. Get some stuff blended in. The green really softens some of the uh, shininess of the brass, especially if you want this to look really rusted. You can go over it with the green and it'll take off some of that shininess. And 
since if you're trying to go for the rusted effect, I really don't think you want it shiny, or at least I don't. And then just check your bottle out again. Make sure you've got it the way you want. Right here, you can really see some of the texture on there. Hi, Heather. How are you? So there's all that texture from all of this. Um, I'm not sure, but it's okay. I can see you the way you are. It's fine. I may soften this up a little bit right here. I don't like hard edges on stuff, so I try and soften everything up around the edges. So that's the bottle. And I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna sit this here. Oh, I don't want it in the way. I'm going to set these aside. No, I'm not. Because we're going to finish on our embellishment pieces. And I forgot I had a little tiny butterfly to add to. So basically, I'm doing the same thing to my embellishment pieces, my metal pieces. I'm going to go back in with some of the brass. And then back with some blues. And I really like how this works on metal. And again, for the metal, I just did a light coat of gesso. Isn't the rust paste fun, Heather? And now I'm gonna grab some of the green. I really want more blues. I'm a blue kind of girl, so I really like a lot of the blues. Oh yeah, I'm happy that this, if you haven't heard, and what Heather just said is that, you know, they're releasing the rust effect in larger bottles now. These are great for traveling, the small size, but if you're doing a large project, you could easily blow through this entire bottle so now they're releasing them in um, larger bottles. So you don't have to worry about that. And you know what scrappers, the bigger the better, right? Love how the flower turned out. Here's her flower. And see how cool it looks on metals. And here are my little leafy pieces. And here's our other little leaf. Let me do our little butterfly real quick. And then we're gonna try and re-adhere these. Oh, that's got to go back to our bottle, and then we're kind of done with it. Tiny pieces are kind of hard to do, especially since I'm using bigger brushes, but we'll work it out. even if we have to work it out with our fingers. Because you know us scrappers never mind getting dirty. Put some of that through there. Alright, 
So we've got our little butterfly done too. Let me put my brushes in water before they get hard. Brush jam. <laughs> also what I pulled out too was a little uh, metallic wax. They may try and add to this as well. All right, so now we're back to our bottle and I'm gonna get these things adhered before we get off of here. Uh, since my 3D gloss gel wasn't drying as fast, I'm gonna try with some uh, Fabri-Tac. Oh, Tina, I'm sorry it won't let you watch the video. What kind of trouble are you having? Maybe we can help you. And are you trying to watch from your phone? Hopefully you can hear me, Tina, and we can get you on. All right, guys, we're going back in with our uh, embellies. Gonna hold those for a minute. This seems to be working a little bit better. Should have tried that in the first place. Let me close up my uh, breast paste. Look at that, so far so good. Now we just gotta get our little metal piece on in the middle and it's full of some 3D gloss gel so hopefully this will let me do it. Whoops, sorry about that. Cell phone, one of the things about being live Let's hold that down for a minute. So I'm gonna take some of the rich copper uh, wax and brush some on my finger and just lightly go over some of the uh, high points once we uh, know that this is holding. And it seems to be holding a lot better. And we gotta get our little butterfly attached too. I think our, that's a good spot for our little butterfly. Okay. Slide him in right there. Get everything holding. Hope everybody's having a scrappy Saturday. Like I said earlier, we we're having a little bit some storms rolling in, so it's a good day for us to be in scrapping. And just so you guys know, you're missing it at Swirly Camp. We're having a great time. All right, that's holding a little bit better. So here's the front of our bottle. You guys see that? So, yeah, what are you scrapping, Heather? That's the front of our bottle. And now I'm just gonna take a little bit of wax Yeah, we wish you were here too, Heather. It'd be a great time. Okay, the wax I'm using has got a little bit more of a red tint to it. Uh, my aged brass, which would have been perfect, got damaged in transit here. 
and we can't get it open. It got bent, so we're fighting with this. Ah, can't wait to see it, Heather. So I'm just rubbing some of the wax, just hitting some of the high points. And actually the red tint goes really well with our rusted uh, patinas anyway. And again, we're just trying to highlight some of the stuff. So I'm just brushing a little bit on and enjoying the smell of the waxes. Uh-huh. Of course, it's cocktail time, Heather. As soon as I'm done with this video, we're going to have lunch. And lunch time means cocktail time <laughs> at Swirly Camp. Well, actually, waking up is cocktail time at Twirly yeah. Camp. Because <laughs> we're all off. Alright, so we've added a little bit of the rich copper to it. And let's see if you can see those little red highlights in there. See how close I can get it before it blurs. Come on, focus. Um, there's just little red highlights. Well, no, actually, Heather, you're an hour ahead of us. So, here's our bottle. Just a simple rusted patina bottle. Where's my lid? I've got my lid here. Don't know what I'm gonna do with the lid yet, but that's the lid to it. So we've gone from this to this today. Any questions, you guys? Well, Thanks for joining me on my second Facebook Live video. It's been fun, um, even with our little glitches in the video. Hopefully you guys stuck through with that with me. Uh, we're gonna be doing this a little bit more, so please leave us some comments. Let us know what you like, what you'd like to see, about how long you'd like the videos to be. And again, please join us at www.swirlydews.com. That's our website. And we also have the Swirly Dudes Facebook gallery. So if you're not a member there, please join us over there. We've got lots of tips and tricks and tutorials and videos and challenges. So we'd love to see you over there. And again, let me know what you thought of the video and what you'd like to see in some other videos. And again, if you decide to join our club, mention my name, Kim, you'll get 10% off your first kit and a coupon for 30% off the store where you can stock up on all these goodies and make all these fun things. You guys have a wonderful and safe Saturday afternoon. And this is Kim from Swirly Camp. Bye.